aspect. I had this candlestick. It was already black, but I want to make it even more spooky. And I had this pillar candle that I picked up at the dollar store. I'm going to incorporate that into this project. Now, if you want to create some faux rust, this is a great tip. Get some Mod Podge and just dab a little bit on wherever you think it would have naturally aged or naturally rusted. Just dab it on here and there. And then while it's still wet, you're going to take your cinnamon and you're going to sprinkle it right into that Mod Podge. And then you're going to set it aside and let it dry. Now we're gonna customize a candle. I made my own napkin. This is a really neat technique. I have a full tutorial. If you haven't seen that, I'll put the link down below in the description. But you can basically make any of your own custom napkins. I printed this off on my laser jet printer and we're going to add it onto that pillar candle. We're going to get some wax paper and with the waxy side, we're gonna wrap it really tightly around that candle. Bunch it up at the back. And then we're going to use our heat gun and we're going to apply heat to that napkin and candle. And as the wax melts, that napkin is also going to melt right into that candle. If you don't have a heat gun, you can also use a hair dryer and just have it on the highest setting. You'll be able to tell when it's finished because the wax will have soaked right through to that napkin. Peel away the wax paper and you're left with a spooky graphic on your candle. I've made these candles before and I've had some people concerned about whether the napkin would catch fire as it burned down. I've never had that issue, but here's a way to solve that. Burn the candle down until you can get a votive right in the top of it. And then you can just replace the votive and you'll never use up that candle also and it'll last a long time. I've let the Mod Podge dry and I'm just wiping away any of that extra cinnamon. And as we do that, it's going to leave a really rusty look. Then I'm gonna seal it up with some matte polyacrylic sealer. So we've taken that black plain candlestick and made it look rusty and old. I also had this mason jar lid and I am going to just use my Gorilla Glue and glue it on the top. And this is what I created. project is a scrap piece of wood that I've painted with some black and white homemade chalk paint and a bat that I found at a yard sale this summer. I really distressed both pieces with some 80 grit sandpaper making it look old and spooky and I'm going to take some of my green acrylic paint and I'm just going to flick it everywhere on top of that sign just so it looks like it's chippy and old. I'm gonna put a graphic on this using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Printed this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text, and we're gonna use a Mod Podge mat. All of these graphics that I'm using today and any of these projects are available in my Etsy store, so you can head over there after the video and check them out. Putting a light coat over that whole piece of computer paper, gonna center it where I want it on the sign, and then set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. After the 24 hours, we're gonna dampen it with a little bit of water, rub off all of that paper, and we're gonna be left with a spooky graphic on our sign. Now I want it to go in and those little drips of blood, I've taken my acrylic paint and I'm just painting on any of those drips with the red paint and just making it look like it's drippy and gory. I went through my stash and I found this old spring, not even sure what it was off of, but it's gonna work perfect for this sign. I have these little staples. I'm going to put one on each end of the sign and then I'm gonna wire that spring on the top so it creates a really fun hanger for this sign. So here's our before and here is what I created. Next project is another candle. I had both of these in my stash for a long time, but I knew I could transform them into something really spooky for Halloween. Gonna mix up some baking soda paint and apply it all over that candlestick holder. If you haven't never made baking soda paint, it works fantastic, creates really great texture. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can check it out. Once it's almost dry, I'm gonna roll it in mud. Just roll it so it gets in all those little nooks and crannies and push it right in so it looks grubby and dirty. 
and then I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. Now I'm gonna go in with some gold metallic paint, some acrylic paint that I picked up at Michael's, and I'm just gonna dab it here and there, almost like a dry brush, on any high areas where it was raised on the candlestick. Not adding very much, just a little bit here and there. Then I'm gonna set it aside, let it dry completely, and then I'm going to seal it up with some matte clear polyacrylic sealer. I've put the taper candle in the candlestick holder and now I've taken another votive and I'm lighting it. And what I'm going to do is as everything is burning down and melting, I'm going to melt some more wax so it drips down that candle. So it gives that old, really antique look to that candle as if it's burned forever and just dripped all over the place. And just be really careful doing this process. We don't want to burn ourselves or get any hot wax on us. And I'm just rotating the candle around so it's dripping everywhere. So here's our before. And here is what I created. This faux book that I found at the thrift store opens up their storage inside and I have a fantastic idea of what I can do to turn it into some spooky Halloween decor. I put one coat of that black chalk paint over that entire book and now I'm going to put on a coat of my white homemade chalk paint. I like layering up the colors because the black is going to peek through and make it look old and dirty and spooky when it's all finished. Now I went out into my garden and I just got some dirt and I'm gonna rub it right into that dry chalk paint. It's gonna give it that really dirty look like it's been a well used book with dirty fingers all the time. You can use sand, you can use dirt and just rub it right in aggressively until you feel you've got the color that you want. And you can see in the corners how it's picked up some of that dirt color, exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna add a bit more and you can spray it with a little bit of water too if you want it to stick a bit. And now I'm going to take a toothbrush and I've got some black acrylic paint and brown acrylic paint and I'm just flicking it here and there on that book. And if you can't find one of these books at the thrift store, you can do this to an old book that's not usable anymore and it's missing pages and you want to upcycle it. You just won't have the storage on the inside. And I've got the perfect graphic that I designed for this project. I printed this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. And if you like this graphic, it's gonna be available in my Etsy store. I'll put the link down below in the description. We're using our Mod Podge mat and we're going to put that liberally over that whole piece of paper. Now you can do this technique with an inkjet. I have lots of comparison techniques. So I'll also put those links down below and you can check that out also. I also wanted to put a graphic on the spine of the book. So I just used a portion of that graphic to do that also. Now I wanna work on the pages of this book. I just took some acrylic brown paint, brushed it on, and then wiped it off with a paper towel, added a little black too, and I just think it gave it that touch of the pages. Now these graphics have sat overnight. We're just gonna dampen them with a damp rag with some water until you can just start to see the graphic show through, and then we're gonna rub off the paper and we're gonna be left with this spooky graphic on the front of this book. I use this technique a lot on my channel because it's so versatile and it's so affordable. All you need is some paper and some Mod Podge and some patience. So here we have our graphics on the book. I'm adding some more uh, dirt so I can get some more aged look and this is turning out fantastic. And I'm of course making a huge mess too as I'm doing this, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. I'm gonna seal everything up with some polyacrylic sealer and we've taken this full book from the thrift store and turned it into a fantastic piece of Halloween decor. And you can fill it up with candy or treats and have out to display on Halloween night.